Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fullcraft, and I've got some bad news. Mid-Terra Steel Armor has broken. I've left it on for ages, I've been attacked by mobs, and eventually it's broken. It's back to the Obsidian Armor for X, but uh, enough about that. Let's check out what's been going on in the City of Maybe, because in our last episode, we were working on this structure right here, and Red Dog is online. I'll be sure to say hello to him in a second. Totally missed him logging on there, didn't see when that happened. But yes, a building has popped up next to us. Scar's building over here has progressed a little further, and this one is Iskal's. Many of you pointed that out to me. Do you know what? I think it's a compliment if you mistake someone's build for a Scar build. I think Iskal would have no problem with that at all. And then over here in this direction, there is something very interesting to check out. We will get to that in just a second. In this episode, we are going to name our shop. We're going to come back to that in a bit. It's, I've got a hilarious name for it, basically, and I cannot wait to do that. I had to spill the beans and tell you that we're going to put the name on the sign of the shop. And we need to investigate DecoCraft, because this is from DecoCraft. That is from DecoCraft. That is a hydrant from DecoCraft. It's got so many useful things that we need to consider when we're going to make the interior of our shop. And also this alleyway right here could do some serious improvement from these oak planks. And maybe we'll find some stuff inside of DecoCraft. But this is Fulsa's build right here. She's got a sign as well. That one is made from DecoCraft again. I believe DecoCraft is very interesting. You're going to hear me say that time and time again. But what a beautiful structure. Really love this. This is this is gorgeous and so many really cool things made with chisel and bits here. But I'm starting to understand what the other guys are really good at doing. I think they're good at looking at pictures and then recreating what they see in Minecraft. I'm not so good at that. I had to take inspiration from other builds inside the game to get to this point. But if we go over to Scar's build over here, which is just breathtaking, you'll probably get a sense of what I'm talking about here. Look at those windows, okay? I don't think stuff like that just pops straight out of your imagination. I think you've got to have a really keen eye for looking at pictures and designs and realizing how you can recreate them in the game. And that is gorgeous. I want to get to that level. This isn't the only building we're going to build. And when we build another one, I'm going to try and kick it up a notch, so to speak. But this is gorgeous. Scar, fantastic word. Word? Work. Work was the word. Right, so there we go. Made it daytime so we can see what's going on over here. So I mentioned that we'll build another building one day. And over here, Scalder has put together some extremely useful resources for us fools here on the server. And I don't know if this stuff's like publicly available, if it's inside of the pack. It's going to be great for you guys as well. So check this out. We have a screen over here displaying some images. And it's giving you some ideas for shops that you could build, like uh, a hatter, as you see there. But then it gives you mods to consider to bring that to life, which is so cool. What a really great thing of him to do. And uh, over here, tools and accessories, different shops from the time, and then the mods that could possibly work with them to enable you to, you know, get to where you're going. This is some next level Minecraft right here, and now you can see that the mods to be considered are to be filled. So some stuff is going to be updated, but there is a lot of stuff that's been considered here. A pub, a street vendor, that would be a really cool idea to make a little hot dog stand on the side of the street. And with this over here, we're going to be able to bring this city for life. Because this is no quick project right here. There's going to be many buildings. I'm sure each of us are going to do, I don't know, maybe three or four, four or five buildings each. And this place will one day look absolutely incredible. As if it didn't already. Uh, but we need to head back to my base because some progression has happened over there. Oh yes, some things have been built. And it's not too much to marvel at. But our fortress over there, which is another project that's going to take us time has had a little bit of work done to it. You can see it's been built up a bit more and I've kind of laid out the foundations for the whole stronghold. So this stronghold is going to have four of these segments, one in each corner, and then eventually it will have some walls linking the different sides together. But all of that stuff isn't going to be symmetrical. It will have all kinds of variations. And so far we've been building up the base around here, building little bits of it over here, like the corners, using chisel and bits to copy designs. And I've got to say, it's been really tedious and difficult. And it's kind of a big learning curve here. You've got to use chisel and bits in a smart way. Building your entire build out of it will make it very difficult. So these walls right here with the corners are really slow to build, but I love the shape of them. And so what we did over here was build the walls out of just the solid blocks. So you get the slight texture variations, 
very slight, but I don't think they offer enough to make it worthwhile. I think the slope over here looks about 10 times better, so we're going to probably stick with that. And then the top bit is going to be the easiest bit to build of all. So I'm hoping that we can power through this bottom area and get it done in, uh, well, it is going to take a lot of time. I was going to say in no time. That'll never happen. It will take a long time. Over here, I've been removing the wastelands, and you can see that the water just drops down into the edge. It looks really kind of strange, doesn't it? And I'm not sure if I want to mess about with it too much. I really don't know how to do this, and to be fair, I don't mind it transitioning like that. When you see it from this side over here, it looks really cool, actually. I love the view from the other side, so that doesn't bother me too much. But what we're going to do at the start of this episode is just remove this water around here, get a big chunk of it done over here, and let's see what happens when we remove the sand and we end up with a border uh, right against another biome, because that as well might need some work, or we might decide to leave it alone. I'm not sure. Let's check what this thing has been set to. Okay, it's set to the correct thing, because we can actually just do this right now. I don't need to go away. Once we remove uh, some of the sand, we'll see. I think in this case, it's just dirt going straight down, isn't it? So that's going to look really odd, and we'll probably have to build some stone up against the side of it. Anyway, let's get a good portion of this done, and then we can figure out what it is we want to do. Well, that turned out to be pretty painless, and it looks all right as well. The trick here, though, wasn't just to build up the stone against the dirt behind it, but just a few blocks in front. Pull those out, and then it looks pretty decent. I think the only thing I might try again here when we come back to it is maybe pulling away at some of the dirt and grass here at the front. But otherwise, that's going to make a nice border on that size, on that side even, if I could talk properly. And look at that nice bit of progress around here on the wasteland. So all of that border is going to be the same. I imagine these planes are going to be pretty similar as well. And maybe this biome over here would be interesting. We've still got a long way to go, haven't we? So last episode that we worked on this, I got a lot of comments about my use of the uh, positive chisel designs. So for those of you that didn't pick up on the things other people were saying, uh, we should basically use multiple of them. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I've taken all of the corner pieces and immediately I've managed to go to the wrong spot. And actually what I want to do is not break that block. I want to consume the entire material. Gone to the wrong block there. We want to go to this one right here and look at how easy it's going to be to build. And once again, we're running out of materials to build this. So I'm going to consume those blocks that we don't need. And we're going to go at it again. <laughs> so that is a much faster and much more convenient way of building these walls up. And hopefully I'll be able to do something similar again. I mean, I've got five of these. It's ten tall, so there's five different segments. So building all of the walls in between should be doable with just five chisel designs as well. So when I next come back, <laughs> hopefully we will be looking at all of the limestone walls done. Which is good because I've been umming and ahhing about which way to do this. So finally I've settled on something. Let's now get it finished. Something just totally confused me then. And then I remembered something. You can rotate these, okay? So depending on what direction you're facing, this might be a little bit awkward to try and place, right? If you hold down shift and then swivel it around like this with your mouse wheel, uh, then you can see it rotates to the correct position. That's something that I forgot about, and I did it accidentally when I was going through all of the items on my hotbar here. So another little tip for you there. Alright, we're going to be done with this for today. The idea is to always chip away at this project, but it'll be a while before we focus on it directly. You can see all four of these are now kind of built up, or at least the other three that weren't. Just going around and putting the spikes on the top, but this thing has worked out really well. And you'll see that I've pulled in this side a fair bit, and that's because there's going to be a wall. Uh, actually, I don't want to place that one there. There's going to be a wall going across this way, but then we're going to put different things in there. So one of them might just be a flat wall going from the other side. Uh, one of them will have an entrance, so things are going to be very different. And we're going to try and make it so the entire build isn't symmetrical, but we kind of put the foundations together here. It's looking real good, but uh, now we're going to move on to something else. So the power situation's been pretty rubbish these last few episodes. I haven't really talked about it. I've had loads of problems with this system because of power running out. And I've done a few things like voided chicken eggs because they were taking up tons of space. So now the lava eggs are able to fill this thing up again. It's a little bit more stable, but if you remember, we tried to rely on these lava chickens and I ran into a problem where these Ender-IO conduits would stop pulling from these nesting pens. Really strange, because it never happens over here. We never have an issue of it. If we look at the top of the screen, we can see all the items have been taken out over here. 
Down there, though, it's not working, and I got a tweet for an idea which I thought was really cool because I have been looking for something a little bit different. So if we drop down below, you'll see that I've tore out the build that we did before down here. Do you know what? I just, I just ain't happy with it, you know? I wanted to do something better than that build style, and also with these chickens not working, it didn't make a lot of sense to keep it. So I ripped out all of those materials, and I should have brought some temporary building blocks. We're going to build a sort of four quadrant farm here, and it's going to be for something you can see in my inventory, okay? <laughs> that is these slime blocks, and I believe there's maybe four or five or six different colours, but we'll take four different colours of these and uh, use it to grow some saplings. Do you know, I haven't really fought this the whole way through, because I need a way to automatically plant these. We'll probably use one of the blocks from Ender.io for that. Uh, but essentially what we're going to do is grow these types of trees and then use them for power because there are slimy generators in this game. So if we open up this thing, uh, you'll see, if we click on the recipes, that it uses slime balls, which is really cool. And if we go through here, you'll see that slime blocks are worth a lot more. So it takes nine of those, or sorry, nine slime balls to make a slime block, and that's nine times the amount of power. But the key thing here is that it still does it in 20 seconds. So we get nine times the amount of energy of using the single item. It's probably not the best of all the generators, but it's a really good way to get going. We can uh, harvest the blocks and then convert it into this thing to generate power, and that's going to be a, a cool way to get going. But what we're going to use is this block right here, the builder block, which we've been previously using to get rid of water and replace it with dirt. What we'll do this time is use it to replace all the blocks that this thing grows into. And I believe what we'll have to do is uh, add a filter here. So we don't want water anymore. If we add a filter for that type of sapling, then what's going to happen is it's not going to mine that. So if we target the airspace from like here all the way up to there, when a tree grows, it's then going to harvest all of those blocks and then it will leave the sapling alone. But we need something to replant the sapling. That's sort of like the crucial step that I'm missing here at the moment. And I believe it's the block from Ender.io that's going to help us. I was about to grab some torches, but then I remembered so I used this uh, painter block over here. Bam, down to the bottom we go. There's some temporary blocks in place because as I was placing things around, I realized that what I wanted to do is create a little bit of a hub in here to go to different rooms. And then I've just laid out some rough markers. And then in here, there is this room. So it's the cobblestone itself that's going to be uh, temporary. This stuff I reckon will stay. I really like the limestone. So over here, this thing can reach each of these provided that we have that in. When I didn't have the extra capacitor, it wasn't reaching them, although I didn't run the test for very long. But now that we know it works with uh, that, so that's cool. Uh, we're going to remove all of this, though, because for lighting in this room, what I want to do is throw down some of this stuff. And what I'd also like to do is get one of four different types of colour so we can... I've picked out the wrong material. That explains a lot. <laughs> Uh, this right here is actually glowstone. Aha! So now we get light coming out of there, but also you won't be planted on there. Then again, it says only grows on slimy dirt slash grass. There's a really easy way to test this. Yes, excellent. So this means that we can have a free, no, sorry, five by five patch of the slimy dirt, but most of it will actually be glowstone making this area nice and luminous. So then we'll have four different colors. I think it's going to look so cool this room when it's done. And now what we've got to do is find out if there's a way we can speed up its growth. Aha, so bone mill works. I believe you can feed bone mill into this thing as well. Excellent. So we've got a reason to use that now. It's disabled at the moment. So the next thing is to now target this right here with, and to clear out some more space actually, <laughs> we've got to target it with a block that I've actually left over here, under there, there it is. And what I'm thinking is what happens when it breaks these blocks? If we break them ourselves like this, the saplings will drop. When this thing breaks it, I hope it does the same thing, because I've brought a vacuum chest to pick up any saplings that drop, but it might silk touch them. At this point, I just don't know, but then we get this stuff. Aha, uh -huh. and then that can be converted into those, and then we can make it into a 3x3 three three block. I'm not sure what to say right now. I'll see how it goes. This gal's got some crazy weapon for uh, taking out the, the wither. <laughs> Did 
Did any of that hit this over here? He just walked into my base. I didn't have my headset on. I wasn't ready to record. And I was like, oh, I know what he's doing. He's placing down soul sand. It's probably like glowstone, painted glowstone like I trolled Ren with. And, uh, and no, he actually spawned a wither in my base. And it's, it's, it's slowly killing me, man. It's slowly killing me. That's going to run out in a second. Hey, I got the Never Star, though. I'm just going to keep that. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. On your way, Iskow. I'm going to keep that Never Star. Oh. All right. So if we select that thing and uh, go over to this corner, select that block and select this one over here. We've kind of created a region for it to harvest the blocks from. Just realize this is a pump. This is for fluids, right? What does it actually say on it? If I could put it somewhere that means I can read it. Collect all liquids. Right. Ah, I need to make a different shape card, of course. So looking at the different cards, there's Silk Touch, and we know we don't want that because of the leaves. There's also Fortune, which might mean that more saplings drop. I've got a feeling, though, any blocks that have a drop, it will pick it up and put it into the chest it dumps these from. So we can, we can make this if we open up this thing right here. But you'll see, although we've got a Ghast here, which is something I, might, I thought we might have to hunt down, uh, we don't have this stuff. And when I've encountered it before in hermit pack you couldn't craft it in this pack you can craft it and that is just fabulous because it means we don't have to run around trying to find how we get that and go into another wormhole of modded and now we have the correct shape card i'm guessing some of this stuff around here is going to get mined uh, let's chuck it in though so yep just click on it like that then it needs some power well redstone power and it's already got power and off it goes quickly let's go up above let's see what's happening anything Nothing so far. Um, well, I have put in the whitelist, right? And the whitelist is for the farming machine and for the saplings. Yet, hmm. Uh, I guess it's got four chunks to do. No, it's going through the chunks over and over again. It doesn't appear to be mining anything at the moment. Uh, it did mine one thing. It mined the thing that's on the whitelist. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I a complete dummy? This needs to be in the other mode. Oh, okay. Blacklist. Aha! We've discovered the problem. I've also discovered another problem. So, I think that's what we want. A clearing fortune quarry. How do we make that? We put glass around it. Because this thing, if you read it, it says it's going to replace it with dirt. So, this should be the final step now. Alright then, this thing should work, finally, come on now. I, I hear stuff, yes, I saw blocks go from above, and uh, the tree's gone, and I felt some lag, and I actually didn't place that back down on the ground, that's my fault, so that thing should stay there. Oh, what happened to the bat? Does this thing target entities, or did that bat just have a bad day for some reason? Let's take uh, a sapling, so it's not going to mind this, but when it grows into a tree, and I don't have my bone mill... This thing has bone meal inside of it. I don't know how we get it to actually use it. Whoa, that was very fast and very loud. Okay, but now what we've got to do is check the contents of this chest. Come on now, fingers crossed. Yes, we get the saplings back. That is tremendous. Okay, awesome. So I guess our next thing to do... Well, we've still got to figure out how to get this thing to actually use the bone meal. But we want to go and find one of each of the different colours. We've already got purple. I want to get some more of this purple slimy dirt. And then we want to find the other colours as well. Ah, yes. This is how it works. If you've got a, a green island, then you're going to have purple trees. Makes complete sense. If we use the mini-map... Ooh. Okay, there we go. So, there it is right there. It's not terribly obvious. I'm wondering if these things will really pop out at all. There's one over there. That one appears to be green as well. Look at the green colour though. It's quite different from this one. I think the desert is making it look like desert grass when actually it's not quite the case. Um, so anyway, I'm going to scan my eyes around here. Hopefully we'll find a purple one. I think we have to go to the overworld, sorry, the never for an orange one. And the other colour, I'm not so sure. That to me looks sort of purple on the inside. Maybe we'll head there. All right, finally I find one with blue slimy dirt, and I think I found a purple island that had the blue saplings on top of it, so we've got blue and purple. I haven't got a green sapling yet. There's a couple other in this area. You can see I've been making markers after I've been looking at the map. I can't remember if they had green trees. I might have just assumed 
um, that they I already had that anyway what I like to do is come underneath and take like a little blob like that that was probably a lot more than I intended to take but that'll give us enough blocks for the project yay I've visited a lot of different places <laughs> And uh, finally we find the green one. You know, I didn't need to do this bit, but I wanted to have four different tree colours and just have a bit of fun with it, you know. So the next one for us to get is in the Never, of course. Turns out there is no blue slimy tree. My master plan has been foiled. We got... Oh, it is blue. Yes, green. What was I after? I thought I found what I was after. Anyway, there's only three different types of saplings. So one of them will basically just have, you know, blue will probably be on top of the green one. We still get our four different colours. And this is what it looks like in the nether, by the way. You find it all the way down at the bottom of the lava lake. So this was my vision for the floor of the room. And it has definitely come to be. I like it. Got to change out this cobblestone later. Aesthetics will come later on. I really want to know how to get this bone mill to work because it doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, but what we've got to configure is these quadrants now. So west, north. I seem to remember last time trying to do this it not quite going so well. So that one is green over there. I think green and blue are both going to have blue. And then what we want to do is actually lock that as well. Oh, it can only hold half a stack. Also, it's not active. Always active. It's planted one. Amazing. Next quadrant is east and north. It kind of looks like it's going to go to plan now, doesn't it? Although, you're not doing anything yet. Probably needs a little bit more time over here, south and east. So, that's, yeah, that's where we're going to have the other blue ones. And then we're left with the purple over on that side. Oh, wait a minute. It was, it was doing it. It was using the bone mill. Look, the number's gone down. I saw, there it is, look, particle effects. That means the bone mill's being used. It doesn't grow it instantly, though. I wonder if some of the blocks around here are kind of interfering with things. Anyway, that means it's kind of good to go. I also added a filter to the, uh, the thing down below. Sorry, the saplings I added to the filter down here so it won't harvest them. Now we've got to figure out how we're going to permanently power these things and sort out the items that go into here. Okay, I believe we've got this now, and uh, to begin with, things are going to be a little bit temporary here. Uh, I've got some ideas for how this might look, although I think what I want to do is have more slimy generators than that, so we could make like a group of nine there, and have those on each side, and then fill the walls with capacitor banks, something like that. Also, when I connected these together, they kept the three little rows. Normally they just group into one. I thought that was kind of strange. Oh, I can see my uh, rings over on that side. Anyway, so I've been thinking about it over and over again, and I think this is the way we're going to get it to work. So our network is going to use an interface which can import and export, and I believe you may need to do that with a chest. So we... Actually, no, no, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure... I don't know. <laughs> I'll figure it out. But over here, we're going to extract the slime blocks and they'll go into the slimy generators so somewhere else in the system we need to convert these things and these things into those and we'll do that somewhere else automatically so here then what we need is an item filter to take the items from actually what I want to do is attach it on this side right so that can go all the way up there and that can be for the saplings so I create an item filter for that they go up there every single time then we need to create another item filter uh, with a conduit so that it takes out the other blocks and sends all of the other types down here to this thing and then I think I haven't if I haven't missed anything that's kind of it all the items go to the right place we have some auto crafting going on and then this thing can extract the slime blocks and put them into the generators and make power and hopefully that'll be it because you know me a modded man this is taking me all day oh and there's that night vision again man what is with that well, uh, with this, we may actually only need one pattern because we've got the all dictionary on and it makes that type. So I'm going to assume all of those uh, work together. If we chuck them into here, we can set them to auto craft, but we need to do that with a redstone signal. So if I grab a redstone block or something like that, just put it above, bam, now that thing should get to work. And soon enough, we should find out if it's making slime blocks for us. So let's type in slime. Oh, yes, that looks like it's doing something. These numbers are going down, that one's going up, that's terrific. And it appears to be using all of these, although that one's sort of jumping about. So by the looks of it, it likes to use the green one first, but then it stops. So it doesn't actually use any of the other ones. 
even though we programmed it to work with purple, didn't we? Nine slime balls. I'm sure we told it to do that with the purple one, and it's only using the default vanilla one. That's kind of worrying. That's potentially a bug that could break this whole thing. Alright, so I believe export is the thing that we need. Hopefully I haven't got that confused. Yep, it's exporting there. This thing is on round robin distribution, and up the top we should be generating power. Oh yes, that is a good sign. A thousand RF per tick. That's quite a lot. I don't know how much we're generating in the other base. I've got no way of telling. And we can increase the speed of this, and that is a very good sign. So the next thing to do is to get our little machine down there that harvests all of this running. Hang on a second. Why are there no tree? Why are there no saplings? Oh, you've run out of juice. Ah, that's kind of worrying. We're not producing... Right, 60 RF per tick, surely. That other generator is making something like that. It's got an upgrade in. This is... I think we have to click on there. 40 RF per tick. Ah, I guess it wouldn't then. So now we need to get this thing... Sorry, both of those running off of the juice from this machine over here. Okay, this thing is losing power fast, but I believe it's all going to this thing over here. So when that's full up, hopefully, yo, we know it's only going to run at 60 RF per tick. So bam, it's full up, and this thing jumps all the way up to over a thousand again. Excellent. Now, I've also realized that moving that thing down there doesn't make too much sense because it's kind of hooked in to giving items to this thing up here. So it's going to stay right there. My concern now is that if we leave this running around the clock, it's going to drain a lot of power. So. Ridiculous amount of noise. Right, but now it's kind of not. Okay, so the way we're going to monitor is by checking out what this thing is doing. Oh, no, it doesn't work the way I thought it would. Okay, so as soon as one of these grows, then it should sap up some power. Ooh. Okay, that that's really bad. Um, there you go, you saw it was negative for a split second. And wait, now it didn't replant? Or it just hasn't got around to that corner again. Okay, another thing we need to get is this thing exporting some bone mill as well. So down below here, I believe I believe we can run it off the same filter system again. This one right here. Oh, I've just attached power to it. That is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to click on that. That's on insert mode. Okay, that is the only insert module. It's not going to go into that one. I believe it's not going to go into here as well. And now all we've got to do is attach a filter to it. I've <laughs> run out of filters, haven't I? Okay, always active. It should now be... Yep, there you go. It's taking the bone mill out of here. Cool thing about this, though, you can increase the amount that it will pick out at once. So if we do that, it will start to leave a little bit of a supply there. I think that's a smart idea. Let's leave, like, 16 in reserve at all times there. That would be a cool thing to do. So there's a little bit of a buffer. And then it can transfer it as fast as that can without any upgrades. And it's got two full stacks of bone mill. Right, and this area causes a little bit of lag when the slime trees grow. That's the one problem with it. Um, but it is producing power, that's for sure. So how are we doing? Still, still got a nice supply of these over here. The energy is filling up. It's going to be to the top very soon. So now, I guess it's about checking the situation um, over at our storage area. We can get over there. There we go. So if we type in slime again... Yeah, I, you can see the green blocks come in and it crafts them, that's terrific, but the other stuff is going to slowly pile up, unless we can find a way to automatically craft it. Looks like this thing started working at some point again, because there's loads of lava eggs in here. Huh, I had loads of comments about it being due to uh, chunk loading or something like that, and that what you should do is break a conduit and put it back there, and I wouldn't want to do that time and time again, you know, because uh, both of these broke down. But we're no longer going for lava. We've come up with our own creative uh, style over here, which is the slime power. And I think it's going to be really cool moving forward. we now got another thumb project down here. And by the way, this limestone, I think I want that to be our building theme underground. There it goes. And now that we're not close to it, it didn't make a crazy amount of noise. Because we've got limestone up here, and I think that's going to work really well in the, the middle of the wastelands. So, you know what's coming. That's it from me this episode. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you for your support. And I'll see you in the next episode of Fallcraft. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.